click, click, and away we go. Hello. Welcome back. More green, black, sneaky snake today. And no changes. Love it the way it is. Rolling the way it is. Yesterday, played against all of the vehicles. Let's see what's out today. Still waiting for those nightmare matchups. Still waiting for planeswalkers and blue control decks. See how our adjustments in the main to combat those work out. But if we end up playing against creature decks all day, I won't be mad about that either. As those are the kind of matchups we should like. This hand is lopsided. It's got the fives and the twos, but that means most draws from our deck will be good. Whether his land is good, spells are good. So we'll give it a try. And right away we see blue black. Perhaps this is the control mage we feared. Let us, let us see, let us see. Hmm, tap land into tap land. Yeah, I'm smelling either super friends or control. Uh, now that's double black, I'm smelling control. All right. Uh, so whatever we play first is probably dead. And since I don't have a lot of energy production or a winding constrictor going on, I think I'll offer up the cub as the first sacrifice. It also hits the hardest if they somehow lack an answer. But siphoner is, I guess it can produce energy over the long term and maybe card advantage, so I'd rather see it live. And here comes a grasp of darkness, right on top. And now we're into Saltai colors. Hmm. Very curious what we're up against. Oh, also, our hand. Like I said, most draws are good, but so far, some land and another two draw. I would like to see a bestiary very much. I want to know how that goes. Or some of those big planeswalkers. Hmm. Could it mean? I wonder if he's gonna let me attack and get another energy. Constrictor. Hmm. High risk, high reward play right here. If he has Yeheni's expertise, I lose two very good cards. And all I really get is one more energy. But if he counters it. I get to play my five drops more like, or I'm more likely to be able to play my five drops. What else? Um, if he has nothing, Verter's Gear Hulk comes down and probably wins the game. I'd say that's a long shot, but let's give it a try. Are we a counter deck? If so, I need to draw the other half of my deck very badly. I need to come up with. Need to come up with the bestiary and the planeswalkers. Commit is the card, and that's going to target the snake. Interesting. Well, that's going to make it even harder to draw those cards. So commit's not a bad card to have right there. But it does mean he's lacking other things, like Fatal Push, Grasp of Darkness, Yeheni's Expertise. So if he doesn't have those, what does he have? Planeswalkers? gonna let me draw an extra card. That can't be part of the plan. Confirm suspicions? He can power up that Lumbering Falls, but that doesn't matter. I have Menace. Maybe that'll influence the way he plays. Let's try it again. And it's gonna let me charge up that energy. That is nice. So if he doesn't kill these, and I am guessing some kind of an expertise or language here. How about a glimmer? Nothing. What is going on? Saltai do nothing. Dot deck. I don't know. Rogue Refiner. So he's an energy deck in disguise? That's something. Fatal push. Target. Siphoner. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get to keep my snake? That's cool. With the mana he has up, I'm not intimidated by much other than a sensor. I think I'm going to use this opportunity to gear hulk it. 
Not the hugest Gear Hulk ever, but a pretty good Gear Hulk. Not the biggest. So throwing everything on the snake isn't that good because of chump blocks and fatal push. So spreading it out it still has to be the right call there. Plus this one has trample. And this gets them both out languish and Yeheni's expertise range. So he needs a fatal push and a murder. Fatal push and a murder. And here comes a bellower. So that's a card. What do you get? His own snake? He chooses Wrecked Sage. That's a good choice. All right. Well, that turns on Fatal Push. Let's go ahead and use it. Doesn't look like it's going to get a lot better. He obviously doesn't have his own snake ready to go. And we're getting down to the nitty gritty. I've got a few cards left. He has a few cards left. But it's time to play this game on the board. That Bellower is not a bad draw. Make this a 2-1 and a 2-1. All right, send the snake first. See what our opponent wants to do about it. Probably wants to block with Bellower. Yep. So we'll shrink ya. We'll eat it. And then we'll play the Sky Sav and clear out the Sage. Hopefully not get punished by Liliana, the last hope. Or another sage. And okay, our plan's on the board. We're fresh out of cards. Our opponent, all they were, they had a, a few two for ones there. So they're up in cards. Do they have the answers? Road refiner. Second Rex Sage. Brutal. Brutal. Yep, Rexage.deck in effect. Just when you thought it was safe to play your artifacts. Ooh, speaking of artifacts. How about that off the top? That's called getting lucky. I could clear these out and hit for five. Is that the play? And then it's a one turn clock ish. Or do I try to soak up the values? I think I try to soak up the values. He's still got cards in hand. Assuming that I could just win this way is a little crazy. These cards have to do something. And we gotta get back some of these two for ones. Please don't kill my ballista. She's all I got in this world. I mean, if you do, I'll take a lot of things with me, but she's sure as good as she lives. He's th like, this is the droid I was looking for. Ever after, huh? Wow. Okay. Let's review. Bellower Sage. Good calls. <laughs> now that's, an, uh, that's another example of these mid-range decks just going way over the top from what they probably should do, but. So this is gonna resolve first so I don't get to kill whatever he fetches. That's annoying. That's annoying. Ugh. All right, I'll take an Omnixilus off the top. Or really just anything card advantage related as we're getting completely schooled in the card, the card zone here. And it is really getting to me. That's a card, and it's kind of exactly what I asked for. So you die again. I'm prepared for the next ever after now. Okay, make you chump. Exile, not the memory. I kind of welcome it. Ooh, he's taking it. All right. Exile the Bellower in case of another Ever After. So there, we drew a two for one off the top. I'll take it. But our opponent going to five tells me they have the answer. Whatever it may be for this snake. Yeah, that's the answer. 
Christ almighty, what an annoying deck. Two for ones, two for one value deck. <laughs> yep. And me without my bestiaries or planeswalkers, which are really, it would, they'd compete with this deck. They'd do well, but we did not draw them. So that's annoying. That is always very annoying. We're pretty much like a blank draw away from death. So another land off the top type of situation. Mm -hmm. Our opponent too also not flooding out. We're both just kind of drew the perfect number of lands. He's just all the two for ones. Yeah, Henny's expertise. Nice. With the Jace. Okay. That's the first card that's like, uh, whatever. But I guess you have your Oath of your uh, Ever After to also be your whatever card. And there's his extra land. Maybe he was just holding it for his Oath. There's another piece of garbage. All right, it's all breaking down. My respect for his deck is slowly slipping away, but it's not gonna help at all. Not gonna help. Hmm. Let's see. We did get a card off the Siphoner. We got a creature off the Skyship, but then he wreck saged it. We got two creatures off the Ballista, but he ever after so he got a three for one. Or three for four for one, maybe? Yeah, just didn't line up. Where is the bestiary when I needs it? Where is Omnixilus? Where is the Vital Force? Where is the Vastwood Seer? Oh, there's another interesting choice. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I mean, hmm. Oh, well, here we go again. What could I draw? It's a little late for all those cards I named. Okay. Now I'm dead if he remembers his Lumbering Falls. Looks like he will. So, ah, uh, that's fine. I Let's hope we can get a rematch like we did yesterday. I definitely want to play this, this interesting trash pile again. It's got a lot of good cards and then it's got whatever the hell came out at the end. It was like a good deck until I saw some other things, but I guess you have to fill it out somehow. Uh, you definitely drew the hot fire side of his deck, at least for uh, the game we played. Let's do it again, please. I would love another, another shot. One more chance. Baby, give me one more chance. Doesn't look like it. Ain't that the way it goes? Miss Hoffman. Okay. Miss Hoffman don't need 60 cards. She an independent woman. She do what she want. All right. Interesting. I'm still, I'm starting to wonder if those cards I mentioned that I keep mentioning in a lot of games are even in my deck. Did somebody tamper with my deck? I just never see them. Never see the Planeswalkers or the Bestiaries. But maybe we're up against aggro and maybe that's a good thing. Not yet at not aggro. Uh, okay. He's going to the slaughter. I don't have any other way to produce energy, and I have a way to get my cub through if he plays a blocker, although not a three mana one. Ugh. 
I do hate playing Cub this early without any energy. Uh, let's go with the Advocate and see what the rest of our draw holds. As we may do something, like, like consider this. If we draw an Aether Hub, uh, or then all we have to do on turn four is play Constrictor, Aether Hub, get two energy, Cub, and we have a 4-4. Four, four, instead of just running it out there as a useless 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, it wouldn't get through this anyway. There we go. Now we're talking. All right. And this guy's off to a bit of a slow start, so that might be convenient. The first thing we do, of course, without question, is the bluff attack. You all know the bluff attack. I have mana untapped. I have blossoming defense. I have Liliana the Last Hope. I have anything like that, and your block is terrible, so you have to take the damage, even though blocking would be fine. This is the bluff attack. Yep. And it actually works on Steam because some players know what they're doing. Some players have gotten got before. Whereas against the one in the two ranks and the AI on Xbox, it never works. So does he have an answer for a bestiary? Does he just have cast out or something like that? Eh, ah, dragster. So this is, this is uh, deck box vehicles. Looks like we're up against the deck box vehicles. Interesting. So yeah, bring that 7 to... Uh, do I want to trade this? No, I don't. I'll take the damage. Let's put some removal spells on top of our library, please. More removal. Hmm. Um, do I want the forest? I almost do. I definitely want to curve out. But it seems like a wasted draw step if there's another land in the top couple. And there was. Brilliant. All right, so this is a case where Kalitas can come online and make him have an answer to that. Not gonna worry that I'm not drawing off Bestiary in the, like while I'm trying to curve out and keep up on the board. We'll worry about that later. We'll worry about that later in the game when the game gets along. Now, Glorybringer for the absolute rubs. There was nothing I could do about that if that were the case, so playing around it would be pretty silly. All right. Fun. Look at all this, look at all this stuff. You send the dragster again? Yes, you are. Just gonna ignore that Kalitas. which here is where I'd be, I'm very happy. I can definitely trade. Ooh, um, I don't know what you're doing there, but I can definitely make this trade. I still take some damage, but this, this is the one. This feels inexcusable to me. This feels inexplicably bad, Miss Hoffman. Your aggro style is a bit too aggro. I just don't think you can make that play. All right, top card. I mean, seems like a good card. All right, I mean, my deck is a snake deck. We're up against aggro in this instance, so drawing cards off these isn't gonna be all that great, but I guess we just don't want to draw. Do not pay. Let's nom a zombo. And let's get an attack in while we can. So that we buff our life total to the frickin' moon, where possible. And put our opponent on a clock. Because if he untaps and uses a removal spell, like a Deccan Stone on this, we never gain the life. Plus we're counting on him to block, whereas he could have flyers, as it appears he does. Yeah, just... All of it, dude. Just play it all. I believe in you. Oh, you're gonna block now? You're gonna D up? Had enough, eh? Okay. Guess I'd take another land here. Or a removal spell. But it's not that good of a removal spell. Hmm. Ah, but I'll take it. It doesn't hurt that much. We got the push for like a copter. 
I can play another Winding Constrictor and just make this thing massive. Or I can blow up his board, which that's got to be a little better at this stage. Let's make it. Let's see what he does about Kalitas coming in hot. Assume he's going to try to put something in front of it. Ooh, that's interesting. Well, I'm not going to sack right there. Don't need to. Uh, it wouldn't be lethal. So now let's play. Let's play kill your stuff. How about that? That makes it really hard for him to win. Kill your stuff. See, the only thing to really worry about at this stage is to start your engines. And if I can put enough zombies onto the battlefield, plus hold up Fatal Push for one of the, like, say, the Smuggler's Copter, things should be okay. He doesn't have, like, any trample over here. He only has evasion on the Copter and the Thopter. And he's... Miss Hoffman sees the writing on the wall. And Kalitas is doom. Now, we never drew a card off this bestiary because we're in the aggro matchup, but that doesn't make it bad. Trust me, that doesn't make it bad. It didn't hurt us either. It just kind of filled the curve. And that's game. Another re-expiration of a kind of janky vehicle matchup, plus a really crazy attack with the Chief of the Foundry. I don't know what Ms. Hoffman saw with that Chief of the Foundry attack. Perhaps angry about getting bluffed a little earlier in the day? I don't know. And we grab one more game for the road. I still want that Saltai deck again. Please, bring it on. MMS. All right. All kinds of naked. No avatars, no nothing, no sleeves. Ooh, that hurts. All right, not where you want to be. It's not the worst six card hand, but it is a six card hand on the play that is slow. And if it's the control mage, uh, the hand is not ready for that, although you would are a welcome addition when behind on cards. All right, tokens, control, zombies. All right, um, does that need to die? I don't think I can race. I think I'm too far behind already. Uh, if I, like, I can't race from this position. I think I have to kill this, and I hate killing Binding Mummy here because it is a four of, he may have more, and it's not usually one of the key zombies. Let's try to get some cards going. I don't know if this will live, but if he takes time off to kill it, at least he took time off to kill it. it yeah, I, I prefer to kill Lord of the Accursed. I prefer to kill Crypt Breaker. I don't think he has Crypt Breaker. I guess he still could because this was a tap land, but maybe he has some black mana problems. Uh, I don't have a revolt thing right now, so Lord of the Accursed is pretty untouchable. Diagraph Colossus could be a problem. Yep, okay, so he's going to take a turn off, kill my Scythe. That's fine. Bestiary is probably okay if we resolve it. He'd have to use an Anguish on making on it. And we drew the land. So, since we're not racing, let's get the value going. Cross your fingers, no Gideons. If this were my zombie deck, I'd be terrified of a Gideon right here. 
course, those one ofs, playing them on turn four, like clockwork, nothing much you can do about it. If you play around it, you're usually wrong. Okie dokie, here we go. And he does not have a crit breaker, but he does have this, and that can be a problem. So we're looking for revolt tactics or other removal. I have to put you on the bottom. You're too expensive right now. All right, I'm drawing my card. Found a land at least. Still gotta find the right removal spell. I wish I could have had the swamp untapped. Oh well, nothing you can do. This board might just go crazy if he has a stockpile of zombies and there's nothing I can do about it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Really? Oh, no. Got no chance in hell. Ugh. All right. Top of my deck has to be way kinder than it's been. He did miss the land drop, but that just means he has a lot of gas in hand. I gotta take the land here. I have to. I need it. All right, let's go see if he'll give us revolt. Mm, yep, that's what I'd do too. <laughs> so, Hydra. Problem with Hydra. I mean, I guess I could do Hydra, not draw a card, leave a push. Then at least, but Hydra does block these. It's hard to kill, so we'll do it. But I want to leave the revolt up. If he kills something, I gotta be able to push one of those colossi as soon as possible. But this situation's really bad. We don't have an answer to a pair of diagraph colossuses, and he has at least four spells in his hand. And some of them are very likely to be zombies. There's a grasp. Okay, that's gonna die. Wish I could cast this right freaking now, but I can't. And now it's like, what do I target? That crit breaker is gonna be so terrible, but I guess I have to focus on his life total. Although I don't even know how I get to hit him. You can draw a card now if you want. That would let me hit you. All right. What do I have to do? Big board? Big board. And more removal. Uh, this would get my Sylvan Advocate big enough uh, to be a 4 or 5, but I think I'll just focus on drawing a land later, and I do. All right. That is a card. So. I think I have to sit back, unfortunately. I think it's just too aggressive to attack here. If, he's, if he kills this, or even if he just decides to attack right through it, and he didn't draw a card. Hmm. Didn't draw a card. I find the zombie matchup. Ooh, that's a weird card to have in zombies. I mean, it doesn't work on the tokens. But I find the zombie matchup to be pretty 50-50, mostly about who gets out in front. And we are playing from behind. So at any given moment, uh, if you're not able to attack, I feel like you are not the favorite deck against zombies. This deck can usually get out and attack pretty well 
but maybe we have to do some kind of a giant winding constrictor board. Oh man. I like you, but I don't think you're what I need right now. Not with bestiary going. I need removal. And I need it now as I mean your removal. Man, do you waste a turn, but I have to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now I might be able to make him throw some zombies away to get to Ob, so we're not going to attack. I mean, I could attack with you. What's that do? If he blocks with all three, I kill two of them. I guess that's better than killing one. Because if I block, I only take out one. Okay, okay, okay. So we don't want to kill the festers. And we do want to kill some zombies before he plays an anthem. Like, I mean, we all know that Lord of the Accursed is in there. We all know it's on the way. So, of course, we want to take out two before we can't take out any. So as he found his fifth land, he has. Is that Liliana's mastery then? No, it is not. It is Liliana herself. Okay. Hmm. Minus two makes it a two, two? Makes it a two, two. But I can still make it a three, three. I can still do the block. Okay, he's willing to throw... I mean, unless he has another zombie, he can't do his card draw this turn. Perhaps if I was going to do it, I should have done it in response to the Liliana activation. It's not like he wasn't going to attack anyway, and I'd have a larger attacker for this coming turn. But he's just going to block with this. That makes energy, and that draws cards. I'll take it. Fortunately, we're on to energy right now. <laughs> Awkward. I guess I could spend it on this. But let's instead see where this goes. So now, if he wants to block with his mummy. If he blocks with a Crypt Breaker, I'm very happy about it, so get it. All right. I think I just need to have my 3-4 on the battlefield. Focus on bestiary finding me another creature to draw to keep the cards coming. I'll need them. Yeah, I think that whole turn would have been better if I had done Hexproof in response to the Liliana activation. Feel a little silly for that. So if I lose this game, it's on me. There's a never. 
chooses. Collie tiles makes sense. Is it another removal spell? It's not. I feel like I'm in this game more than I should be, considering the way that started. And he just wants to play the card advantage game. At least we have something to keep us in that type of game. But we need to keep limiting his board. That's fine. I don't have any way to take advantage right now, but I may as well draw the card and see what I get. Maybe I will find an energy producer. Ooh, okay. Um, so let's see. He's got some good double blocks. Uh-oh. Doesn't work well with you, does it? Is that just something I have to live with? I feel like it is. But I don't have to go after Liliana, but I feel like I should do something. Let's keep uh let's hold back. Let's get let's get wide on the board here. And try, we're going to try find a way <laughs> to pay these off. That's that's the plan. He's drawing cards, I'm drawing cards. Let's see. He's definitely ahead, but let's see with who can get who can get to the finish line. Some of the good cards on the bottom of my library are Vital Force and a Tireless Tracker. That's frustrating. Another Always Watching. Another card that just is so strange in this deck. Maybe he thinks that means he can send Festering Mummy in. I can't let that Festering Mummy die. It'll be very sad, but I gotta find a plus one, plus one payoff. All right, Big Scry. Not you. You. Um. Well, I just want that extra card, don't I? This game might be a lot different if I had held that Rampager. Okay. Of course. Of course. Three, three Long Tusk Cubs in a row on top of the deck. Just the way God intended. At least I have another creature to play next turn. Right? Crypt Breaker? Yeah. Keep paying life. Keep drawing cards. Oh, he's gonna make a zombie. What's your card? More land. Okay. So he's holding some bonus lands. We got a, we got a, we got a sweater though. If I can generate, if I can draw anything that makes energy at all, my board goes from a bunch of vanillas to very good. There's a servant. That's annoying. Not the end of the world is a 4-4. Four, four. Also in the draw category, that would be Bomb Sauce is Verter's Gear Hulk and Nissa Voices Zendikar. The big payoffs. But any way to make energy, even an Aether Hub would cause some ripple effects on this board. Oh boy, that's great. <laughs> it's a good card. Okay, so be it. Now his deck is starting to cooperate. Let's see if I can get mine to cooperate. You gonna shrink the Rampager and attack? I mean, you still have a bunch of 2 you You're gonna shrink a Cub. Huh, all right, sure.
He's taking the whole timer on this one. Ooh, really? That can't be right. That can't be right. What is he doing? He must have a way to get it back. Maybe he's just thinking he'll get it back with Liliana, but come on, man. Yeah, this is whole turn timer type of turn. He's going to draw. Sure. He's going to draw again? Don't think so. Down goes Crit Breaker, the biggest thorn in my side. And I, I don't know. I can't explain. I mean, yeah, I'll take that, right? It's a creature, we draw a card, we get rid of an always watching. So can I be crafty and get rid of his servant here? Let's try. If not, I trade for a zombie, no big deal. He's going to go that way. He's going to play it safe. But we took a shot. Uh, because if this had three damage on it and we took out an always watching, uh, we would be very happy. Okay. Big payoff is there. We just need the time. Just need the time for it. land. I'm coming. Still no energies. We can kill this now with Liliana. Does he have another Dark Salvation? Has he found a Liliana's Mastery? Those big payoff cards that zombies needs. Is he actually going to tick down and get back his Crypt Breaker? I would. Or I'd get a zombie. A Diagraph Colossus. Oh man. I would have definitely gotten something like that. Diagraph Colossus here? Wow. But instead, what's he gonna do? He's gonna take out the Sage. It's like the AI, man. The Planeswalkers only go up. All right. Make another zombie, drain another one. But it's definitely time to turn this game around. A way to produce energy would also be excellent right here. This is now now would be a heck of a time for an Aether Hub to make his blocks horrendous. Ooh, I'll take a grasp though. There's the hub. Wow. Alright. One, two, three, four. I guess I want my, I guess I want this out of grasp range, or it's, oh, it's gonna be big anyway. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to this one, the trample, the tramples. All right, it's time to get serious. He's probably just gonna chump, 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 but how long can he pay three zombies a turn? Didn't block with the festering. Weird. Let's see if he figures that one out. Right? Remove. We're at 10. Is his plan to ultimate this? It feels like it is. He's had so many opportunities to get back good cards. Okay. His plan's to ultimate it. Not how I would be trying to win this game, but it's not up to me. Anguish on making off the top. Nice draw. Nice draw. But has the damage been done? Down to 14. Let's 
that's the play. Still can't believe he threw away that Crypt Breaker on that attack. He has Vigilance. He can attack with these pretty free, like reasonably freely, but he will not. I think we're just gonna save this till the, till the final hour. Try to find the perfect spot. This will never be better. It will always be a 2-2 death touch. It can be a very good blocker against a larger creature or thing, but that's not what I'm worried about. I don't really just want to trade it with, say, a Dread Wanderer, though, but I guess I need to use it when there's something gained. So if I attack with these, it's going to block, block, block. So I may as well. Also, do I attack with the Constrictors? He has some good blocks. And then he can go block, block, and maybe shambling vent, so that's not that good. All right, go like this. I'll send this here, and he'll have to block it if he wants to keep his hope of the ultimate alive. And then we'll send these to the face, because if he lets them hit him, all hell breaks loose. So am I willing to give up a Constrictor? I don't think so. No, not here. Not yet. Okay, Vent's up. It's a 3-4. So let's kill it. So he doesn't get that option. It's clearly he wanted it. And we don't want him to gain the life. Yep. Not the trade I love, but I don't feel like it's kind of where you gotta be. But he has to give up his whole board if he wants to kill the Quagmire and keep from being hit by a cub, and he's gonna do it. Now, does he know about the mummy? If he targets one of these snakes, it'll die. Uh, uh? Same difference. Okay, so he's thinking he's gonna kill that cub. That's what he's planning to do. I can put three counters on it. Okay, I think this works. I put three counters on it. He puts one, three counters back on it. Down to a three one. We play out our lands because of the bestiary. You never know when you're gonna need it all. Our opponent has lost their insane zombie board from earlier in this game. Liliana finally ticks down now that the AI is running the show and says, of course you go get the 9-9 Diagraph Colossus. Are you crazy? And of course, there was the Lord of the Accursed right on top of the deck waiting. And is this really over? He can go block and he can go block. Now it's over. And here we go. Locks there, 14. Stevens, if he blocks a cub. Yep, cub blocks Stevens. And my god. Mmm. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with how that was played, but I can't do it for him. We can only try to play ourselves, and we made a mistake or two. To be fair, I think I could have played more perfectly, but it was good enough for today. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the very intense videos uh, and much battles, good times were had. I will see you tomorrow. Later.